Hi, this is Pat Love with Pat's Two Cents. We are God's Church of Love online, meeting every Saturday at 12.15 p.m. Pacific and 3.15 p.m. Eastern. Now, we're going to have Davina Tellez speak this afternoon. And this is powerful. She's telling how the devil tried to knock her off of her walk with the Lord. The devil tried to sabotage her relationship with God, but she realized she had to reach out to the body of Christ when everything in her wanted her to run from the body of Christ, from shame and condemnation. But she remembered the word that said, therefore now there is no condemnation for those that are in Christ. So I want you to hear this because she's not only in Christ, she's also following God's ways. And when you slip off of your beaten path and you trip over your own two feet and you fail in a place or two, you don't lay there and wallow in your self-pity. You clean yourself up, repent, dust yourself off, and get back in the game. And that's what she did. And I want you to hear the anointing on this message as she tells her story and encourages you to do the same. God bless you. Oh, but basically the enemy was trying to come in into my walk with the Lord and he was trying to use like old tricks, old stumbling blocks, things that the Lord had um, delivered me from, things that the Lord revealed to me like that I needed to overcome and that I needed to seek him and, and everything. And um, and so I kind of started to slip into back and like start to backslide into things that I knew the Lord had specifically delivered me from those things. I knew that he was leading me in a gracious way and he was patient with me and merciful and he and he continued to help show me how to seek his deliverance and through these things. And so uh, it kind of put me in a spot where I started to slip into it. And then, then it was like he built up the enemy, built up on that backslide and he started to use condemnation and shame to kind of like isolate me from my brothers and sisters and to isolate me from the Lord. So it was like, I kind of felt like it was like, a, you know, like the, the crab in the boiling water situation where he gets you in the water and little by little he turns up the flame so that you don't really notice how much you're getting separated from the Lord. Um, and it doesn't seem like, oh, it's that bad or, you know, oh, but God is good and he uses, he uses his children to to speak in, and he gives people words that help convict our hearts and the Holy Spirit will move to lead us. And um, a lot of times people feel that condemnation and the shame and they want to, they want to quit. You know, you might feel condemned or ashamed and feel dirty or whatever the enemy tries to put on you. And that's exactly what the enemy wants you to do. He wants you to feel ashamed and feel guilty and dirty so that you don't fellowship with your brothers and sisters, that you don't continue to lift your hands up to the Lord or to come to his throne boldly, like he says, even though we fall short of his glory and we start to pray less, we start to go to church less or, or fellowship with our brothers and sisters less. And um, the Lord wants us to, to repent from that. He wants us to not ever quit. Not We have to pursue him diligently. And that was one of the things that the Lord started to use um, my brothers and sisters that were encouraging and they, they would have words or share testimonies and it was convicting to my to my spirit. And the Lord started to encourage me to just keep pushing forward and to seek in his word. So I kept praying and I kept praying. And um, I knew that I had to like share. I was already sharing with God, but I shared that with my brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And I leaned on my brothers and sisters to say, hey, look, I'm struggling with this. And um, it was a really difficult thing to do, but the fact that my brothers and sisters had embraced me and encouraged me and said, you know what, like, just keep on pursuing. We all fall, fall short. It helped me to get back up. The Lord used them to help me get back up. And God kept saying, you know, repent. We need to repent. Not only of, like, sinful things that we might know we're doing, like, God wants us to turn from those things and to face you know, the things that he has for us because they're so much greater. He wants us to turn from the thoughts that tell us you're dirty, you're unworthy, you're not good enough, you're never going to, you know, make God happy. He wants you to turn and repent from that 
don't, you know, cast, he wants us to cast down everything that exalts itself against God's word in our life. And God says that we are the head and not the tail, that we are victorious, that we are more than conquerors through Christ who gives us strength. So we got to remember that we have to renew our minds and to think on the things above. And we have to renew our minds by consistently staying in the presence of the Lord when we wake up, you know, to constantly fellowship with the Lord and not to squeeze him into our day, but to say, okay, quit making decisions on your own and start seeking the counsel of the Lord. Start including him more in your day instead of just putting him in the morning or in the evening and that's it. Like we got to really be diligent about about keeping that relationship with him. Um, Sometimes we just get caught up in the things of life. We get busy. You know, I'm a mom, I'm a wife, I have a job. And it's so easy for us, you know, oh, I'm working here. I have my family stuff going on. I have, you know, all these things are so easy to get swept up in the busyness of the world. But God wants to stop and to really, like, let him lead us through our day, which is a really, really challenging thing. And um, it takes a lot of discipline, and it takes a lot of prayer for the Lord to instill some of that discipline in us. And it's okay if we don't do it. It's okay if we don't hit the mark right away. We just got to keep trying as best as we can. The more that we try, the more God's going to honor it. The more that we fall, the more we seek God's word. The more we keep asking, I'm sorry, God, but, you know, please help me do better tomorrow. Please help me do better for whatever the part of the day that I have left. Because that's the only thing that we can't get back. We can get money back. We can get another job. We can get another house or, you know, different things like that. But we cannot get time lost. So we need to be wise with the time that God has given us, the opportunities that God has given us. And we don't be like that servant who buried it in the dirt and they just wasted every opportunity, every moment, you know, so we don't feel guilty and ashamed because we keep dropping the ball, but we keep being like the, the righteous man who falls seven times and continues to get back up and we use the Lord to help us. And if we can't, if we're struggling, like if we're going with like shame and condemnation, you you got to seek the Lord fervently. And, if, and I would highly encourage you to reach out to a brother and sister and say look i'm really struggling like i need some help i need someone to help pick me up because i know that i'm not going to be able to stand on my own two feet and we sometimes need that physical brother and sister that the lord might put around us to hear that actual voice that and the lord can use them to encourage you and to help strengthen you in your walk because sometimes we see the situation around us and it's so much easier to whether it's temptation or it's a struggle that's making it difficult for us to have faith, it's easier for us to see those things because they're right there in front of us. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and for example, like in 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 13, verses 9 through 12, it talks about like, you know, we see in part, we prophesy in part. We don't know, we don't have the whole picture. And um, the other day, it was so amazing. Like I was sitting in class and I was working with one of the students and we were reading a book, the kid picked a book. And the book was called Six Blind Men and an Elephant. And I'm just like, okay, cool. You know, he's starting to read. And as he's reading, the Lord is actually ministering to me. Like, there's these six blind men. And, you know, they have, they, regardless of them being blind, they're still learning so much. They can hear these sounds. They can, you know, they can feel the different things going on around them. But for some reason, there was like an elephant that came to town and, they didn't understand the concept of an elephant. Like, they didn't know what it was about. So they all wanted to, like, find out what this elephant was about. And um, they had their own things going on. So they went and they traveled. They go to meet this elephant. And one of the blind men touches the side of the elephant. And he feels it. And he's like, wow, this is really hard. And it's really big mm-hmm. um, and solid. This this elephant must be like a rock. To me, it must be like a wall. And then the other blind man went to the tusk of the elephant. And he felt it. You know, he just went up and he ended up touching the tusk. He's like, wow, this is hard and it's sharp like a spear. An elephant must be like a spear. Well, they kept going on. You know, one of them touched the trunk of the elephant and thought it was like a giant snake. And the other one touched the leg of the elephant and thought it was like a huge trunk of a tree. Mm-hmm. The other one touched the tail and it was like a rope. And he, so they all just had these perceptions. You know, the other one touched the ear and it was like, um, they thought it was like a, a giant fan. So they kept arguing about no that's not what an elephant is you're wrong it's like this it's like that and sometimes we get caught up in that and with our brothers and sisters we have our own perspective or maybe the lord reveals to us things in different ways and so sometimes we only see what god reveals to us and sometimes 
well, a lot of times actually, we go through a situation and we only see like maybe just the tusk of the elephant, the tusk of the situation. And we're like, you know, Lord, why? You know, you're not talking to me or Lord, I'm struggling and it seems like you're not helping me. It seems like this season is so hard. So we only see a tusk, but that's not the whole picture. We only see one small piece of the situation. We don't see like one of the scriptures that, you know, uh, I can't even think of where it's at, but the, they were praying and they were um, praying for, they were in the middle of warfare and stuff and they were praying to, and an angel came to them and they said, you know, we prayed for this a long time ago. How come you didn't come? He's like, from the moment that you prayed, from the moment that you called upon the throne of the Lord, we were dispatched out to come and to come to your aid. But we had to war and battle through all of these, against all of these demons and all these things just to get here. You know, so sometimes we think because God doesn't answer our prayer right away or because um, it doesn't seem like it's coming out the way that we asked it to come out, we think that God isn't working. But we have to remember that, that in Isaiah 55, chapters 8 through, or 55, verses 8 through 9, it says, Just as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are God's ways higher than our ways and his thoughts higher than our thoughts. We cannot even comprehend and, and understand the things that God does. So just because we want things done a certain way and God doesn't answer our prayers the way we want, doesn't mean that he's not working all of it out for our good. It's better to have all that God has for us instead of all that we want, because what we want is probably a lot less than what God has for us. And so sometimes we struggle. And the reason I say this is because I really have struggled with this a lot in my life. There are so many times that I've cried uh, out in anger or bitterness toward God. Like, how could you? Like, why would you? You know, say you love me, but yeah, I struggle this much. Yeah, I go through all this stuff, Lord. Like, how can you don't deliver me from this stuff? You know, or help me protect me against these attacks. But at the end of the like, at the end of the whole situation, when it was all said and done, like I look back and I'm like, wow, like I was so wrong because what I thought God gave to me wasn't even given to me by God. It was given to me by the enemy. It was a, it was a. A fleshly desire that was granted to me by the enemy to get me off the course that God had for my life. And if God had not ripped that ripped that situation and circumstance and people out of my life, even though it hurt so bad, yet he, if he had not done that, I would have been so lost. So sometimes God does do that. Sometimes God will strip people away from you, will strip a job away from you, will strip some situations away from you so that you do not become a slave or uh lost in something that is going to lead you to help sometimes you might be alone and you might feel like you're isolated from a lot of stuff because the way the world is but god is preparing you and he is getting you ready and he is keeping you from being tainted by the world or by people that are going to damage your calling and your and your you know the plans that he has for your life you can lose out on so many blessings so many opportunities so many souls that you can save if you're messing with the wrong people if you're in the wrong situation or if you're just distracted by something that's not even that important that's just something that's a temporary thing sometimes it doesn't even have to be dramatic um so that was just some of the things that god wants to, us to remember like that it's okay to question him it's okay to cry out to him it's okay to be upset and you know, but we got to remember once we get to that point, like we cry out to God. Yeah, it's okay. God, I don't understand why you're doing this. Why? Why are you doing this? But we don't just leave it there. We have to really, okay, Lord, I can't change it. It is what it is, but help me to change what needs to be changed. If I need to change, help me to change. If I need to change something around me, help me to change something around me. If I just need to learn something, help me to learn something. But we got to remember that God is for us. He is not against us. He is on our side. He created us in his image and he has a specific plan for each of our lives. And so we got to remember to not get caught up in and wanting to be like the world sometimes or even feeling like, man, I just, I never get it right. Because sometimes like we'll get into that perspective like, man, I'm never going to get this right. I'm never going to, because when we start speaking those things, we start thinking those things like there's a uh, a saying or it's like a poem it's like thoughts become words and words become actions and actions become habits and then habits start to form our destiny because we start to just get in this habit so we got to be careful like the bible said words are sharper words are like a two-edged sword like we 
words are powerful. They can you can speak life or you can speak death into your situation, into your relationships, into our circumstances. And we gotta be careful to what we speak. Well, I'm never gonna I'm never gonna experience God or I'm never gonna um, you know, reach my goals and stuff. I feel like I'm never you know, we gotta be careful saying those things because words are so powerful. Just as it's just like when God spoke the world into existence, he gives us that same power but we have Christ, he gives us the power to speak things. And that's why we have to be careful what we speak. We might feel a certain way, and that's okay. We can ask God to help us with those feelings. But that's the part of faith that is the biggest thing. Is like you may feel like you're never gonna um, you know, walk in the calling of God, but don't speak on that because you know what we feel, our feelings can lead us astray. Our feelings can trick us worse than sometimes the enemy can. So we can't be led by our emotions because our emotions are not what created us. Our emotions are just signals that God gives us. And when we start getting those signals in our body, like we get angry, Lord, what's making me angry? Help me to understand my anger. Help me to not act out and sin in my anger like your word says. So we got to be careful of the things that lead us. Our circumstances don't lead us. Our, our emotions don't lead us. The Lord should lead us. And in order for us to step in alignment with that, we have to be speaking God's word diligently, not being, you know, lazy about it. And, you know, or, you know, I'm just saying this because it's some of the things that I do and the Lord has been convicted me to stop, like stop wasting your time because you don't have the time that you think that you have, you know, stop, stop sitting here thinking these thoughts when you could be focusing on my word and speaking what I say to stop having a pity party for yourself to be you know or you know different things you know he might be telling us different things so we need to be seeking god continuously and diligently we should be asking him should i do this should i go you know you know do this or go do that or hang out with this person and then also that be seeking in our word as well because time is just what is it time is like a vapor in the wind it's just gonna come and it's gonna it's gonna come and it's gonna go so at the end of the day, we're all going to stand before the Lord and, and we need to think about like, man, I had so many opportunities to, to just seek the face of God. There's so much, like, imagine the creator, it's like not even the president or anybody super, like a celebrity is greater than that. We get to have time with the Lord and we don't have to go look through a thousand sheep and flocks of sheep to go and make a sacrifice and come to a priest who got to speak for us. You get direct access to the Lord. And so... Take advantage of that because God wants that time with you. He wants to spend, he wants to reveal himself to us more and more. And we have to be doing that by diligently seeking him. A lot of times we, it's like we got to think of ourselves as like glasses, like a cup, a glass. What are you putting into yourself? You know, what are you putting in? What are you pouring into yourself? Because that's what you're going to get out. Because a lot of times we're pouring our we're pouring into ourselves all the things of the world and then we wonder why God, we can't hear the voice of God. We're pouring in Facebook and Instagram and we're gonna go hang with our friends or we're gonna, you know, we're busy because we got a busy schedule. And then we wonder why there's only just a little bit of God in there and we put a little bit of God and we wonder why we can't taste the goodness of God sometimes. God is not angry with us and he's not trying to like, condemn us in any way he just wants us to wake up